off a day, everybody. It is spooky season. This is the best time to sit around the campfire, sit around a table, even sit side by side and discuss things, all things supernatural. We are kicking off this spooky season with Tatamotna Tales. It's something that we do annually. It's a podcast as well. And joining me, who better to join me, is my papa, Bel Paulino. How you doing, papa? Off a day, I'm doing just great. Yeah, great to oh, hear. And it's nice to be here. It's amazing to have you here, most especially because every single Sunday, we fall into this pattern of storytelling. You are an amazing storyteller and you have a lot of stories to tell us. So I know that over the years, you have experienced some encounters with Tatsumunda. So I just wanted to ask you first and foremost, because you also are a really strong cultural practitioner. Can you kind of walk us first and foremost through what Tatsumunda means? Okay, Tatsumunda, it means, uh, you know, when I was actually growing up, I remember my uh, parents would always explain what Tautomona is. And somehow there was this misconception that Tautomona is supposed to scare children or scare people. And that should never be the case because it's so connected, so built into the culture of the Tamora people. And it's supposed to help people uh, be able to respect each other, to respect what you know, uh, nature has given us. It means that we need to, uh, you know, just completely uh, respect the environment. That is one of the reasons why, like for instance, you are out in the, say, in the Buni area or in the boonies, and you are going to use, you know, the restroom, for instance, that you would say, you know, Tautomona, uh, Tautomona, may I just use the restroom. And that is just showing a respect for the environment, but not necessarily that, you know, it is something that is going to scare you. Right, yes. right. And, and you, especially when, when we were growing up, respect has always been a huge part of our family dynamic. And it's something that you and grandma have taught my family and I and the rest of us. So just uh, while we're on that same vein, I wanted to segue into your experiences with Tatsumona and also, you know, learning how to respect that. So what was one experience that you've had with that? And can you tell us about it? Okay, you know, there was one because when I was actually growing up, I, you know, or became an adult, I saw the, actually, you know, the, uh, somehow this uh, kind of belief, I started to erode. And so I remembered right after the house was built, there were uh, naughty stones that were dug up from the house. And so they were put to the side. So one of my experiences, I said, you know, I just want to prove whether this is really right of what my parents were saying about, you know, the need to respect the environment, uh, respect the so-called Tautomona. And so I got up in one of the lattice stones and I started rolling and I said, you know, and I raised my hand up and I said, you know what, Tautomona, Tautomona, I am stronger than you are and you do not exist at all. And so I said, I'll show you how, how to do this. And so I took one of the, you know, the lattice stones and I rolled it down the hill. Oh my gosh. Little did I know what was going to happen that night. We just got home that evening I remember because we went downtown we got home and little did I know that the experience that I had during the day it was going to entail exactly of what you know our elders our you know our, our ancient Samoa people were saying that we need to respect whatever you know we have around us or you know the environment so doing that that day, I didn't think that, you know, something will come back to me and show me that I lost that respect. And sure enough, I went over to the sliding door just to make sure that the sliding door was locked. And the next thing I heard was a banging on a real loud banging on the sliding door. And I thought somebody was going to break in. And then I ran over to, you know, the side of the kitchen in sight. And I went over uh, and I stood by the door and another banging was so loud again and started hitting. And then again, uh, when I, I, I started hearing a lot of banging on the windows 
and it went over to where uh, you know m my children were sleeping and all of them you know when they heard that real loud bang banging they all stood up and they ran out of the room and went to where we were standing so we finally got into one of the rooms and we uh, we made sure that the uh, you know the children were uh, safe and we locked the door and you know during that time there was no air conditioning the house we, we had the windows open and so while you know I I you know I your grandma just slept I mean I lie down on one side and well I also did on the other side and you know I just could not sleep because it continued that throughout the evening that banging that it was so loud I thought we were going to uh, be killed that evening and so finally I gave a call to my brother Carlos and David and they came over and they said let's sprinkle salt because maybe that will chase them away or let them go away that didn't happen so finally they left I thought everything was going to be okay so I we went back uh, uh, to bed again and so that eve I mean you know within a few minutes there was a huge figure that got into the window and pull me up from you know from my uh, legs and started banging banging my body on the bed up and down oh my and gosh. so i even had to hold on to grandma and she was i had she was bruised all over because i was holding on to her because the this huge figure was pulling me out the window oh and i gosh. said never again would i ever disrespect and sure enough I proved myself to be wrong that, you know, what is this? When I was a kid, I had so much respect for, you know, the Tautomona because they were supposed to be the, the ancient tomorrows or, you know, our uh, so-called Manamko, that we need to respect them. Even if they were gone, we still need to show respect. It is not an option to disrespect them but right. to show respect to all of them. Right. So that was quite an experience for me. Yes, and I, I remember hearing this story so many times when we were growing up because my mom, my auntie Bridget, my grandma's also off camera. Everybody can all attest to the same exact experience, which is so, mm -hmm. it gives me goosebumps. And it all, again, goes back to what you were talking about, about respect. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess, what would you say to people who don't believe and who feel like they don't well, have Well, I just proved the point that, you know, when you do not show respect for... You see, uh, one of the things that I've, I've learned, even with my religious, uh, you know, beliefs, and that is, when, once you pass this world, you're not going to be, you know, you have a soul, then it's going to be alive. And so when you do something that is wrong, uh, then it's going to go bounce back on you. And, and I believe right now in today's world, people have very little respect for their neighbors. You know, we, we need to do good uh, to our neighbors. We need to take care of each other. The Afa, in Afa Maulik. And in that uh, cultural practice in Afa Maulik, it goes together with two other beliefs, and that is in Agofli and uh, in Agwaiza. In Agwaiza is to love thy neighbor as thyself, and that in Agofli is to go beyond the skin of a person, is to see a person as a human being and no less than a human being. So I remembered my, the elders and my parents were saying that you dehumanize, you know, the owner or the owners of a home when you break in. And so violating something like that, that was inculcated, was taught, you know, since I was a child, you know, to respect, you know, another person, to respect the properties of, you know, others, you know, was something that is a no-no. So I just proved a point. I did not show respect when I started rolling and showing that, hey, I am mightier than you, than you, uh, you are, you know, and that was not right. So that was something you know a no no exactly what you're saying i think everything is interconnected especially the ways that us as chamorro people view 
the environment, we view each other, we all see everything connected as yeah. one. You know, I just want to throw in, like for instance, I remembered when I was growing up, my parents would always say, you know, here's a mango tree and you see a lot of mangoes. One of the things that I remembered is you do not treat that mango tree as uh, something that you can abuse. Take whatever you need. This is the advice from our parents, and so was the ancient Moro, so was the Totomona. You know, is to get whatever it is that you need and save uh, whatever it is that for the others. And if people do not consume that, then it should go back to the ground and so that there is something that will continue the life of that mango tree or whatever fruit tree, the otis. And look at the otis tree. We hardly have otis tree uh, right now or the laguna because people just go in there and cut them down. And, and yet, you know, I remembered when we were growing up, spare them, you know? And so for the sake of whatever it is, probably development, we got rid of these things. But they were very precious gifts uh, from our Totomona, our uh, you know uh, first people, and so I see them. That was always defined as Totomona would be the ancient Moros. They were our first parents, n n you know, not to talk about the you know Adam and Eve, but you know, but they were the first parents of our Chamorro people. And there is a need for us to continue respecting that so that we can hand down, that would be a legacy also, should I pass away, that should be a legacy to you and to others, you know, to my children, to others that I, you know, I interact, you know, on a daily basis or my neighbors. Right. And that's why even up till now, why do you think I go out there and even in my old age right now, I still push that more to make sure yeah. that I take care of my neighbors. So, you know, all the neighbors that would cut the grass and, um, and I don't expect that for them to come around and say thank you because our Tautomona, our ancient people never expected that. Sure, there is that reciprocate right when you do something, and that was just a very normal thing, but it's something that is, is done because of Inagwaja as one of the values. Inagwaja is, you know, to love without counting the cost. And that was something that was taught, uh, you know, growing up. And I used to maintain, I remember when I was growing up, you know, I loved to write, so I would you know, throw these things, uh, write them in my journal. Right. Yeah. And I and you also were able to show us that. So it's amazing to see that these stories are documented, not just from, you know, our Manamku mm -hmm. and our elders, but also in actual writing. Um, and everything that you're telling me, I'm so happy that it's also been documented. So again, Papa, thank you so much for sharing your experiences and also thank you for underscoring the true meaning of what Tatumotna means mm -hmm. to you. And again, everyone watching, this is just another story of how we should respect one another, how yes. we should respect our environment and just lead with that. So please take that lesson with you if you're watching. Mm -hmm. It's not something to be scared of. It's something to maybe mm -hmm. embrace and learn from the people who came before us and again really have that respect papa so auntie bridget brought up a good question and i didn't touch base on that so when you mentioned that when you called uncle carlos to sprinkle the salt and it didn't work mm -hmm. uh did you guys because i know that there's a practice to go back to the same place where you uh had your encounter and sure. apologize was that did you do that I, I didn't do that, and none of us even thought of that. I think we were just so scared that evening. But going back to about for, you know asking for forgiveness, and that is uh, the first example that I gave was about like for instance, if you out in the jungle and the boonie uh, and the boonies, you you need to use the restroom. First thing that you do when you immediately is ask for uh, for you to use it, and then just say and so when you violated something uh, you know there is a need for you to ask for that forgiveness and I never did I uh, you know where because we were just so scared that evening and so I did not 
And then one of the things that I want to mention here about the sword, the sword is really something that will spice up, will, you know, energize things. Okay. Yeah. So it depends upon how you you did it. And so with the sword, it requires also that you ask for forgiveness, and oh. which we never did. So that was the reason why when I returned into the room again, I, you know, I, we were in bed and uh, we were just waiting because we couldn't go to sleep. And then the next thing I knew was this man was standing, you know, coming into the window and standing and pulling me up. And that was something. And so I said, you know, you know, please let me go. Why do you have to do this? I didn't do anything wrong. And then realizing that I didn't, I, what I did that evening, you know, which showed actually the lattice stone, that it was something that I pushed down and I wrote it down and I said, I'm stronger and here it will uh, erase you from the rest of, I mean, from this world. Oh no. Yeah, Papa. but I did not ask for that, uh, you know, uh, forgiveness. And so I needed, and so there at that point, I said, please forgive me for what I have done because I did something wrong. So definitely the sword, my brother David was right. It was something also that was taught, handed down, that when you know that you have been frightened, you know, you become so scared of what you, you know, something that was happening, then the next thing you do is uh, take the sword and you know the kind of sword that we had at the house was not something that was purchased. Okay. It, was, it was something that was done, you know, by or, or by or, you know the elders or our parents at that time. And we we I remember it having a Salinas. And so the Salinas is the one where you process, you know, you get the salt water and you boil the water until it becomes, and you can see the salt on like the bottom. Like what they do at Jeff Pago. Jeff Pago, okay. exactly. Wow. And so that had to be done and, uh, and that, that way. Wow. Yeah. So something that also, and this is another thing that we need to do. If say you have broken into somebody's house, believe it or not, they are going to come back and get on your case. So, yep. I, you know, I and I've been really, you know, doing, you know, in my uh, theological studies, one of the things that I've learned is demonic. You know, something that you have done, yet that you have done all these crazy things in life, and it's going to get back on you. And essentially, this was something that our, our elders, our man uncle, the ancient tomorrows have been talking about is to do good because you don't want that to come back to you. That evil is going to come back to you. Right. And so probably, uh, you know, I kept thinking, you know, when that happened to me is probably there were uh, Totomonas that, you know, turned into evil ones because they didn't want to do something good, even if they were probably advised by the other Totomona not to do that. Let it go, you know, because they are just children, but yet they come back and they do all kinds of uh, things to harm them. Right. And I've heard of stories, it, it never happened to me, but people who were actually harmed, yeah. You know, like for instance, uh, they were pushed, you know, standing there and they were just pushed by, you know, like totom I mean the to by the Totomona and not realizing that it, you know, uh, because of what they did that was really bad, that was the reason why it happened to them. Right. Yeah. And you know, you just segueing um, into, I, or actually not segueing because I think the the underlying tone of this entire conversation really centers around respect. So. Mm -hmm. Can you teach me how to ask for permission, like when we are out <clears throat> in the jungle area or times where we should just let the Tatamotna know we're there? Oh, so yeah. what would I say? Okay, and if, uh, say for instance that you're walking into a deep uh, jungle, all you have to do is Tautomona, Tautomona, Kausinyadzu, Humala. 
Not for no fun. No. Okay, have to okay. slow down for me. Okay. Tao tao mo na, tao tao mo na, kau sinya zu ho ma. Tao tao mo na, tao tao mo na, kau sinya zu ho ma. And then what's after? And then the other one that you know, once you are in, uh, put for board. You can say, put for board. Agua para bait sobre, meaning something that I need to do. Put for board. So we are put for board. No, go senior. Oh, not you. No, 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 that's okay, don't worry. <laughs> but, you know, thank you again for sharing your experiences with us. And thank you for sharing, you know, all of the lessons that you have taught not only myself, but my family over the years. Uh, definitely respect is something that reigns true in our family. And it's a, it's a lesson that Grandma has taught us, Auntie Bridget, you. So, again, thank you for sharing. Don't be afraid. Just respect. Um, yeah. Every time you go out, just be mindful of what's around yeah. you. Because it was never thought for, to scare people or scare children. It was supposed to be really uh, to teach you a sense of respect, a sense of responsibility. Right. So, yeah. again, respect, respect to, and be responsible. Thank you again, Papa, for coming in today and sharing all of your experiences and all the beautiful golden nuggets that we can take with us. He is our first Tauto Motna Tales, and be looking out for more because we will be doing this throughout October. Again, thank you, Papa. We'll yes, see you guys. You're most welcome. All right. Adios. Okay. Adios.